This unassuming block of concrete apparently houses one of the best car collections in the world. Uh, many, many people have told me to come here. This is the Southwood Museum Trust. And um, I guess we better go and see what all the fuss is about, really. Well, let's head in. Here we go then. Check out what we've got in here. Ah, Smith Flyer. Possibly the most simple car that has ever existed. Just got one powered wheel at the back, a fifth wheel. If you just drop on the ground when you need to, and off you go. That is minimalist motoring. Uh, what we've got over here. A Tatus Formula Toyota car. Different, but I think we need to be in that bit. So um, let's kind of look. We're going to enter through the shop. We have already cleared entrance, by the way. I don't need to pay today. Uh, they are kindly let me have a look around for free. Um, so we'll start off with this um, Cadillac, which was owned by um, a gangster, Mickey Cohen. Um, and um, yeah, I, I guess he wasn't too popular, really. Certainly made good use of his bulletproof glass. Look how thick the glass is in the doors. This car must weigh an absolute ton. It's many tons, I should think. They eventually managed to get in for um, tax evasion. And next to that we got a 62, a series 62 Cadillac, a 1959 with the huge fins and a trailer. Uh, one wonders if you need a truck license for an outfit that long. And over here we've got this enormous Daimler DE36, which used a straight eight engine, um, built for a royal tour in 1948, but didn't actually happen, it got canceled. Um, but I love the fact that, you know, it's a huge car, but next to this Hudson Super 6, it doesn't look so big at all. Um, Mercedes-Benz 540K, next to this enormous 770K, uh, I believe that's the Grosser. Very popular with um, Nazi officials. Again, the Rolls-Royce Phantom 5 looks almost dainty. Uh, the Phantom 6, uh, which was a slightly modified version, was the last production car with all drum brakes in the early 1990s. Uh, we go over here, things start getting a lot more interesting. Uh, Plymouth Prowler, I shouldn't like, but I do. And the Carver, hoping to have a much, much closer look at this Carver one in a separate video. Uh, Corvette Stingray with the pop-up wiper shield, and McLaren with a very beautiful pantograph wiper arrangement and if we um, take in the aerial atom oh yeah i should probably take in this enormous v16 cadillac as well uh, it is enormous um taking some time to walk around to the front of it and owned by marlena dietrich and uh, again another simply enormous motor vehicle uh, i've got a delorean because obviously you've got to have a delorean and um, you can see the Lotus Esprit, which shares its chassis right next to it. Uh, main difference being that the DeLorean is properly rear-engined and the Lotus mid-engined. Jeepers. Uh, 390 cubic inch Ford V8 with Daimler fluid flywheel on a motorbike. That's going to keep your shins warm. Um, Ed Rofe has built some very unusual vehicles in his time, including this um, remarkable creation based on the Beetle actually drivable. Tatra T77A came from the UK apparently. Uh, remarkable machines with their um, teardrop styling in the 1930s. This huge fin down the back and a big old V8 engine. A Buick 35 Tourer. We'll go, come and have a closer look at that in a bit. We'll just take in the um, Bugatti 57C. Look at the um, interior. Absolutely beautiful. 
Bon Jambi that he was more involved with the development of the Type 57. Uh, fantastic machines. And a Rolls Royce chassis here, so you can see what's going on underneath. Interesting mounting of the suspension springs. And right hand gear lever controlled in this huge gearbox. Massive flywheel and a uh, big old straight six twin spark engine. That is a Silver Ghost chassis. Got another cord here. Uh, I seem to get everywhere these cords. But uh, if we start coming down this line, we've got um, an Alfa Romeo here, the 6C, a very beautiful car from the 1930s, very low and rakish. This remarkable Dodge, um, a, a bit of Kiwi ingenuity there, he decided to um, make the body out of copper for reasons no one understands. Uh, proper barn fine car there, a Stutz Model AA. Chrysler 70, little Riley Merlin. Uh, this is a replica of Bruce McLaren's first race car, a little Austin 7 Special. Ferrari 750 Monza, a big old Bristol 401, very finely engineered, very rare Lagonda drophead, Armstrong Siddeley, Jaguar Mark V, first Jaguar saloon car to use independent front suspension, Sinclair C5, let's do a test on one of those at some point, a Vauxhall, a fluted bonnet, and I uh, must come over here for a moment because for a start we've got this very fine um, Mercedes 38 stroke 250 SS from 1929 supercharged engine but look at the um, I guess that's to try and cool the intake charge uh, that's your early intercooler going on there and uh, we've also got a city car um, I've never been fortunate enough to drive one of these but aging wheels has so if you search for aging wheel city car you can see his rather amusing test drive of this really quite hopeless early electric car and um, coming down this line uh, there's a swift there this is a lagonda i didn't even know lagonda did like cars um, but apparently it's kind of a semi-monocoque construction so there isn't a full chassis a lot of it just bolts to the body uh, which is quite interesting a gwyn never heard of one early renault very distinctive we have the radiator behind the engine uh, Citroen B2 see Citroens used to be conventional and uh, the Renaults were the quirky ones those were the days uh, Bull Nose Morris Austin London Taxi uh, Napier that's pretty huge and a Rover Town Limousine oh how did it go from this to the City Rover and the mind boggles an Argyle from Scotland. Great accent there. And a Mitchell Little Six. What did the big six look like? And a Stanley. No, oh, Stanleys were steamers. Yeah, there we go. So it's a flash boiler, I believe, in these. So, so they could actually create steam pretty quickly. Uh, we must take in the redhead because um, this was raced by. Um, Len Southwood who um, created this museum and he managed to get this over 100 miles an hour um, although the last time it ran uh, which was in 1956 I think it snapped the propeller so um, yeah that's pretty serious so it's got a V12 aero engine from Allison 1450 horsepower gosh quite the machine so I think from this we can conclude that old Len was a bit of a character. And uh, I must find the car that started this collection. It all began with a Model T. So we'll see if we can find that car. And um, we'll, we'll uh, no, we'll, we'll head underground. Because this is quite nice. They've actually got this little area where you can go underneath the cars. And see what goes on underneath. I shall push the button on the wall. I'll probably regret doing that because that'll now freak out the refresh rate on this camera. Sorry, I just can't do anything to stop it doing that. I've tried many things. Um, so yeah, we can see the prop shaft coming down here. But of course, what's more interesting is the DAF Variomatic. 
and there are the twin pulleys on this 44 um, so it's like what I've got in Took but there's one for each wheel and they work independently so it acts as a sort of a limited slip diff um, to handle the vicious power of the air-cooled twin-cylinder engine and uh, there's another old car to have a nose about uh, if you're feeling brave you can stand under the drips it's like ro Russian roulette I suppose in a way Now I do like Dodge Vipers and so far it holds the record for the fastest I've ever driven in a car. Uh, I drove one on a track day and managed to hit 130 miles an hour in it with its 8 litre V10 engine. It did handle a bit like a truck but it was quite a fun truck. Rolls Royce Phantom 1 and uh, it looks enormous next to this tiny Rolls Royce um, 20 horsepower Bentley 8 litre. Very notorious in their day because they could do over 100 miles an hour. Uh, more Bentleys going on. E Type Jaguar Porsche 928. I'll take a look at it just because I'm in a Porsche today as it happens. A Ferrari 308, but American spec, I think. Mitsubishi GTO, Honda NSX, and the um, Skyline R32 GTR, just for a bit of um, wah power. Another huge Lagonda V12, Mercedes Benz 600. They are a big lump of car. And the smaller 220 SE. Very fine, I think that's a fin tail. Yep, see the um, fins at the back. Uh, Mercedes-Benz 300 here. They did the 300 as a 300D, which was a full four door convertible, which is quite interesting. And there's a Maybach. Probably don't have to go Bach like that. That's just me picking up on the Welsh. So it's a Super Mark IV, Super Impreza. The Goldwing Mercedes Benz, um, Lamborghini Diablo, um, which only has two windscreen wiper blades on this crazy pantograph wiper setter. I saw one earlier in this trip with three wiper blades and I was ever so excited. Uh, th this remarkable contraption was built in New Zealand. It has a 24 litre six cylinder engine and uh, apparently it's best driven in top gear because otherwise it just blows the tyres to pieces uh, quite like the Pontiac Catalina on the end there we'll go and look at the 4x4s in a moment but we'll just take in this Rauch and Lang electric car yeah quite interesting old lead acid batteries uh, Essex Super 6 here actually uh, an American car not um, a British one. Um, various American cars, an Auburn sedan. Very nice. A Ford V8 Coupe. That's a peculiar looking thing. Willys 37 sedan. A Dodge D8. Chevrolet Master. Interesting wipers there but it looks like it would have originally have had the wiper at the bottom that's a little peculiar i wonder if that's some kiwi ingenuity going on there uh, mercury 8. look over here we've got a very early austin a30 by the look of it see someone's replaced the trafficators with actual proper indicators probably quite wise little ford 10 uh hillman minx chariot um jupiter and this is quite an interesting car it's a standard flying V8. I didn't even know these existed. Apparently this is one of four survivors known in the world. Uh, so, um, yeah, a, a new one on me. Very interesting. There's a heavily crashed Porsche 911 here. Land speed record holder. Uh, 216 miles an hour, or 348 kilometers an hour, in 1996. Um, apparently wanted to go a little bit faster and then the tire blew out, they think, and disaster occurred. Some more Americana going on. We'll get over there in a minute, don't worry. Dragsters. Look at the state of this one from the 1950s. It's got an Allison engine out of a Kitty Hawk P40 fighter and develops 1200 horsepower. That must be a, an exciting ride. So, yeah, over here we have an 1895 Benz Velo. And uh, it was actually bought over here very early on, about 1900, so that makes it the oldest car in New Zealand. And 
yeah, has taken part in Art Deco festivals. It does come out occasionally. Apparently, it still starts readily. One swing of the flywheel. And we've got an 1897 Lux here as well. That's a Cudel de Dion. I, 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 I never know how to pronounce this. Durier? Um, not sure, but the oldest car manufacturer in um, America. There was not. There was another chap who claimed he'd built the first car, but I don't think it ever actually existed. He just wanted to try and get a patent on it. Uh, automobile curve dash, a Darak, and uh, oh yeah, we must continue down that line because there are interesting things. But we're just going to take a little sojourn here to take in the Suzuki CV1 with 50cc moped engine and the uh, Reliant Regal Mark 1. So this is Reliant's first passenger car after starting off making three-wheeled uh, delivery vans and pickups but um, very pretty Alvis look at this remarkable Davis three-wheeler I mean it's vast it is seriously wide it looks like you could see four across that bench um, apparently very few were produced and the person who set up the company ended up getting in rather a lot of trouble because um, yeah it seems a bit of fraud was going on there that was like a Jaguar V12 engine I think Certainly complex enough to be one. Maybe I should put that engine in this Bugatti or would that get me shot? Maybe that'll get me in lots of trouble. Let's have a brief diversion back to the old stuff. Uh, early walls leader did on Bouton. A Holzman Surrey High Wheeler. That really does look like the horseless carriage, doesn't it? A very early Austin. Wow, 1913. And uh, a Clement Talbot. Another Austin from 1910. Very early Fiat. But look, it's another Fanomobile. Um, remember I went to the, um, the um, Laumann collection in the Netherlands and there was a remarkable van with this same setup but this allows us to get even closer to taking the sheer bonkers absurdity of this powertrain so we've got these two little fans on the front which sort of smear air over this inline transverse four-cylinder engine uh, which then um, takes its drive through this remarkable gearbox through this chain down to the front wheel so it's a front wheel drive three-wheeler uh, quite remarkable. Uh, it must be very interesting to drive. Maybe one day I'll get the chance. Uh, very early Singer. Woods Mobilette cycle car and another early Wolseley. So this is quite nice to see a very early Land Rover 1949. That's the first year of actual series production of the Land Rover Series 1. Next to a Toyota Land Cruiser J40. This isn't a particularly early Land Cruiser. Uh, they started building them in 1951, but um, yeah, I think they look quite good together, that pair. Uh, Volkswagen Schwimmwagen, Willys Jeep, and one of these remarkable NSU Kettengrads, Kettengrad, sorry, um, a tracked motorbike. It's rather bizarre. And here's a Rolls-Royce Merlin. Uh, shame we can't hear that running, that would be um, loud. But yeah, it's a reminder that they've got planes. Look, a little tiger moth there, and they've got a vampire lurking over this liner, which we shall take in. Uh, that's just silly. Uh, I don't know what that's been done for. All right, it was used by um, Kiwi Bank as a promotional tool. Uh, little Messerschmitt, Fiat 500, Bambina. Uh, little Gogamobile Coupe, these things are delightful, there was one at National R Microcar Rally, there was a Lloyd Alexander as well, but this one's an estate, not seen one of those before. Uh, big Chevrolet sedan there, Ford Ranch Wagon, but look, Tata Nano, uh, again, Aging Wheels has driven one of these as well, um, not very far because it was slightly broken, but he did have a spin in one at the Lane Motor Museum. Uh, which is somewhere I would very much like to visit at some point in the future. Not quite sure why it's got a Union Jack on the roof. 
seeing as it um, had nothing to do with um, the UK. Uh, I was denoted by the former British High Commissioner. Okay. Interesting. And uh, yeah, the uh, Trabant, another aging wheel thing. A little BMW Isetta with its linked wipers. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All over here, uh, Ford Custom V8 Studebaker Champion and an AC 2 litre. Oh, I forgot to take in the Bond Bug and the Tippin Delta. Uh, it's an invalid carriage. Tippin is um, seems quite an apt name given how skinny they are. Um, but it was Frank Tippin and Sons who built these. T I P P E N. Um, so some had single cylinder Villiers engines, some were electric. And uh, again, they saw quite a lot of service. There are motorbikes, most of which I know nothing about. That's quite a strange looking engine. Oh, they called flat twin. Um, obviously we've got an aerial square four. They are the motorbike of this trip, it would seem. Motorbike of the year for me. That's, that's a motorbike. I'm pretty sure that's one as well. Well, breath superior with sidecar. We've got lots of very, very noisy fans here, but they do help move the air around. Lots of Indians. Interesting. You'll have to add your own comments to these because I don't really know anything about them. But you do get a very nice view of the overall museum from up here. We should continue. Yep, definitely motorbikes. Aha. Uh -huh. I think the Stuart scooter, I think we saw the um, prototype for that at the Packard and Pioneer Museum. Uh, a rather unsuccessful effort to manufacture a scooter here in um, New Zealand. Well, not everyone can be a winner. It's not always as easy as you look, as it looks rather. Nice old penny farthings there. And a Moulton Deluxe, uh, de developed by Alex Moulton. Um, uh, he of um, suspension fame and uh, had front and rear suspension on his bikes. And the Moulton Motor uh, Bicycle Company is still going today. You can still buy a Moulton bike, I believe. Oh, there's a Trojan down here. And I wish I could tell you more about that crazy um, transmission, but I don't really understand any of it. They did have a remarkable engine as well, in which the Combrods bent in use. Um, quite bizarre things. And then we got a little line up here, a Morris Austin, an American Bantam. That's quite tiny for an American car, 747cc, Austin 7 Ruby, and an Austin 7 Swallow. So, built by the Swallow Sidecar Company before it became Jaguar. There's also a quite sweet little um, scene here. I like that very much. But there is also a downstairs. So, we shall bypass the Morgan here and the um, crazy tea bucket. And also this remarkable sort of rat rod creation, which apparently they just built with bits they had in the store. So the body and that roof are original as in um, someone here used that body and made his own wooden sort of back to it. But then they just chucked in anything they had sitting around, which apparently included a Lincoln V12 engine. I don't know if it runs, but it'd be really marvellous to hear it. Oh, and that is a Chrysler Airflow. I thought I'd seen one down at the Bill Richardson Museum, but now I see how big the Chrysler Airflow is. I oh, know I didn't. That PS Arrow there with the headlamps is on the wing. 
So this is certainly um, a hall with plenty of appeal. O'Reilly Elf, Mini Cooper S, Moak, Reliant Kitten, Austin Allegro, very early minor. But also things like a Honda N360, Ellswick Envoy, the replacement for the Invercar in many ways. And gorgeous early Honda Civic. So this remarkable jeepney um, is very typical of the Philippines, where um, mirror signal manoeuvre must take some time. There's a well-travelled Land Rover there, a well-travelled Ford Model T there, and I did 20,000 miles driving around the world at 20 miles an hour. Uh, another Nat, these were quite popular, built in New Zealand in Christchurch. And Farm Bike, also um, a New Zealand product with a little Suzuki engine. And the film prop from the Woody Allen film, Sleeper. Um, we'll get to that interesting middle row in a moment, but we'll just come down here. I'm taking the Purvis Eureka, which British folk will recognise as the um, Nova, and South Africans as an Eagle. And a rough wiper on the lift up canopy. Auto Union um, Thousand, very pretty coupe. One of those two CVs. I reckon they're alright. Very funky little buggy. Bangkok taxi. Like a license built um, Lambretta. Yes. And this remarkable auto rickshaw. That's a motorbike and sidecar taken to new levels of luxury, as in a roof. A locally produced um, MGTF replica. I think I've seen one of those out on the road actually. Track in a van coupe and saloon. Gorgeous metallic colour. Citroën DS and SM. FX4 Taxi, nice 1970 example there, and yes, yet another Trekker, I'm still yet to get my hands on one, but there's another one, uh, E30 Bauer, Cabriolet, NSU R080, Humber Super Snipe, and uh, New York Checker Cab, big old beasties, but yes, there's the front of the Trekker. But uh, yeah, we've got a few traction engines and stationary engines here. And some old fire engines. Possibly the most interesting is this Tilling Stevens. They used to make trucks and buses uh, in the pre-war era. This dates from 1920 and is a petrol-electric hybrid. So it's electric motors that drive the wheels and power this remarkable ladder driven by this enormous petrol engine. So there's no direct link between that engine and the road wheels. I find that fascinating. And uh, Dennis as well. Variety Pathfinder. Uh, Chrysler Valiant CM. That's quite a rarity. Uh, Holden FB and EJ and Premier. Working our way along to the VL, complete with Nissan engine. Speaking of Nissan, not only have they got a Datsun Bluebird 310, just like my friend um, Eddie has got, um, got this fine range here. They've got a Prince Skyline. This is when Prince was still a separate company to Nissan and uh, it introduced the Skyline Saloon in um, 1957, I think it was. And this is the first generation. So this is way before they became known for being powerful, um, all-conquering saloon cars. This has just got a 1.5 litre four-cylinder engine, but um, very well engineered. I think they had independent rear suspension, if I remember rightly. Um, so many see Prince as the Lancia of um, their time. Although it must be said, um, the looks aren't all that Lancia. They're still a bit typical fussy Japanese. It's also interesting that it says it's 1484cc, but it's got a 1900 badge on it. So I'm just saying. So a quick run down the Datsuns. 
replica of 180B, so that's the Bluebird effectively of its time. A Toyota Corolla here, and an SR Coupe, and another Mitsubishi Colt hatchback. Next to a Toyota Sarah, and an E Type Vauxhall. A rather spectacular shade of metallic green. The back end of the Mitsubishi Colt is quite difficult to see, but not actually a hatchback, I thought it was, but no, it's a little notchback, like an Ami 8 or um, early Alpha Sud. I'm going to get in terrible trouble if I don't look at the Fords as well, aren't I? That's Mark 1 Escort with rectangular headlamps. Mark 1 console Cortina, that's a very early one when they still use the console badge. A pre airflow and a Mark V Cortina next to it, so represent the two extremes. And then we've got uh, Ford's F and Mark III. I've seen quite a lot of these about, so clearly popular here. The Falcon Futura. I said I'd show you this car, so here it is. This is the Ford Model T that began this collection. This car was purchased for $40 in exactly this condition in 1955 and uh, they now have a nice one so there's no need to restore that and also got a nice old um, rover tourer yeah but yeah that's um they will never restore this car which is a shame in some ways but then if you restore it it just looks like every other model t so um yeah i think i approve of what they have done I've just come back for a closer look at this uh, Mercedes-Benz 540K. Uh, I've been told um, the history is potentially quite interesting. There were a few features I hadn't picked up on before, like the um, fact it's got a removable hard top. So you can remove that, and then there's a soft top in its place, so you stay nice and um, dry. But it's also right-hand drive, and has a mile an hour speedo, which suggests it was built for a British buyer. And uh, th th there's one rumour that this might have been to um, be presented to certain members of the British royal family in case of a takeover by the Nazi party um, back in the Second World War. It's possible. It's very hard to say that isn't the case. Um, but mind you, it's quite difficult to say it is as well. So it's just one of those nuggets you don't know. But the history of this exact car is quite interesting. It was bought as a complete wreck um, by... Um, Mr. Southwood himself uh, from the UK w did make it there eventually after the Second World War and uh, or possibly before it, it's all a bit cagey no one quite knows but it was being restored by someone who'd gone bust and so a lot of the pieces were missing um, the headlamps were missing the hubcaps the rear wing spats and bumpers they've all been made in New Zealand and um, that's some master stroke to pull off to try and recreate this stuff. The headlamps apparently came from America and were $5,000 each. Ooh, that's got a smart a bit. So uh, yeah, it was um, probably about 15 years ago the restoration was complete on it and uh, it now looks absolutely resplendent. So they've done an absolutely cracking job. And some of the details of the work, the bright work they've had to match and the rear lights which they've copied from the one next to it the grocer extraordinary levels of work and uh, yeah some kiwi ingenuity right there where you might not have expected it this is a rather intriguing model actually it's like someone's cut into a, a mini engine and gearbox and tipped the top half over so you can see how it all works and uh, so there's the crankshaft going round obviously it wouldn't normally be at that it's at 90 degrees to where it normally is ignore this chain that's what's powering it but normally uh, that top gear up there would mesh with these drop down gears down here and um, what I don't fully understand is how the clutch works and I wish I did because this is the clutch on the end of course drive doesn't go through the clutch it goes back in so it must disengage that um, top gear you can see spinning there 
and stop it from engaging with these ones down here. And then you've got the gearbox internals and the diff driving out to the two um, drive shafts. So that's, that's quite a clever model that. I absolutely approve of it. You can see the little pistons going up and down in there and uh, the engine driven fan. Very nice. I've come down for a closer look at the Trojan and um, that's the engine and uh, as you can see it's got these paired cylinders on a conrod which must bend or otherwise the physics don't work they can't actually go up and down uh, so flexible conrods actually are a thing on these and then drive comes into what I think is an epicyclic transmission a bit like um, a Model T Ford uh, don't fully understand how that works or all these controls variously um, but it did do some miles at some point. Look, it's got a digital speedometer effectively, like a Citroen uh, BX, where the dial moves and the indicator doesn't. These Trojans are really absolutely bonkers and persevered with things like chain drive and solid tyres um, well into the 1920s, this one being a 1926. Crazy, crazy things. Oh, here's a, another fun little thing, a demonstration of the poppet valves. Yeah, as you'd find in a standard engine. And the sleeve valve, so this is the sleeve valve fitted to cars such as Daimler's and the Willys Knight um, also uses a sleeve valve engine. So you can see it's just sliding cylinders, very quiet. And as they slide, they open up these ports But sadly, you have to lubricate these so that they always tended to burn quite a bit of oil, um, these cars. Oh, this is an original demonstrator, I think, maybe. Or well, maybe, it, maybe it's just aged to look old. The new method. And I've also just noticed we've got um, the 20 millionth Ford here. Um, I don't know if it is the actual 20 millionth, but it was definitely used to promote the production of it. Interesting. Well, that has been um, a very interesting look around the Southwood Car Museum. Um, yeah, I've really enjoyed that. Some spectacular variety. Quite a lot of the cars, especially those at the back, I think, are kept in running order. So that's always good. Always appreciate that. Uh, we'll see if we can do a separate video have a look at the um, carver but uh, I shall say thank you very much for watching I shall see you in a future video farewell it's me